welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're going to show you how to do the rear brakes on a 2003 Toyota Highlander. It's pretty simple and straightforward so let's go ahead and jump into it. So on our rear brakes here the first thing we're going to do is remove this dust cover for the emergency brake adjuster here. Let's go ahead and remove that because I don't think our new rotors come with this so we want to remove this and set it aside. So on this brake caliper setup it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, there's only really one bolt that's actually also the slide for it and then it hinges upward so there's no second bolt uh, up here like on pretty much every other brake assembly I've ever worked with. So we're going to take a 17 millimeter wrench or socket and remove this bad boy right here. There we go. So then the caliper just kind of swings up and out of the way. So that's kind of cool. So while we're here we can remove our brake pads, but we're going to keep this back one. Make sure you hold on to this. We're going to need it later. So on the rear brakes here I have the caliper flipped up. It's a little bit of interesting mechanism there. And I have a C-clamp and then uh, we're just going to set the C-clamp in. We're going to set the brake pad in while we tighten our C-clamp here and that's going to wind, that's going to push the piston back into its housing and then once it's fully recessed just stop and check and you can verify that because the piston will be fully into the housing. You'll be able to kind of lay your finger across and you won't feel that the uh, piston is coming up anymore. So it's ready for a new braking surface. So on the rear here for the caliper mounting assembly, we want to remove uh, these two 14 millimeter bolts. There's one. And be careful after you remove this top one because the whole assembly and the rotor can fall off at this point. So I've placed the brake caliper in a safe position that it's not going to fall off and it's not hanging by the brake line and we can just go ahead and remove the rotor here. There we go. Here are the rear brake pads we're working with today. They are Bosch BC885. Uh, they're a ceramic brake kit, so they should work nice for us. Now, um, it does come with two sets of pads in here, but I've already done the other side off camera, so I only have these brake clips and brakes remaining. It does come with some synthetic uh, lubricant that you could apply to that slide bolt, or if you want to, you can apply it to these clips and these channels here. I'll tell you why I don't like doing that, because as the brake rides in that channel, like this, actually I think it goes this way. Uh, the brake is going to heat up and a lot of people say, yeah, you want the this to slide, but it already slides pretty good, especially under braking force, which is a lot. Um, and my problem with putting grease here is that uh, brakes get hot and as they heat up, that grease is going to liquefy and if that gets on the braking surface, your brakes aren't gonna work. So that's why I don't like using it. Some people do, just not me. Here's our rear brake rotor, it's an AC Delco. Uh, 18A9083A, link down below in the description. Yes, you can use GM parts on a Toyota, it's fine, as long as it's a reputable parts house, I just wouldn't cheap out on brakes. So something like AC Delco or Bosch is a uh, good idea, or you could uh, very much use the Toyota OEM stuff, that's um, just as good. What we want to do here is take a uh, clean terry towel and some carburetor spray or brake clean and clean the braking surface. And the reason we're doing that is a lot of times manufacturers will put a thin film of grease on this braking surface to prevent it from rusting because they don't know how long these things are going to sit in a factor or not a factor a warehouse because these rotors according to the box were made in 1995 so they've been sitting around for over 20 years so they want to make sure that these will make it to the end user even decades after manufacturing. So we just want to clean that grease off because as I mentioned earlier, grease plus braking surfaces equals no brakes. So there we go. Now this is ready to put back on the car. Now we can put our rotor back on, making sure to be careful this doesn't fall off while we're working because if that meets your toe, it's probably going to break it. And we can put our caliber mounting assembly back on here like this and replace those bolts from earlier. Now we can tighten those bolts back up. Kind of tough to see due to the sway bars, but I already replaced them. 
off camera. I'm just gonna tighten them up. The next thing we can do is replace these clips. We can just kind of get them off there with a standard screwdriver. Like that. We'll just replace those clips just as we found them. Pretty easy. And those just push right into place. And you just use your fingers on that one. And replace that top one. That is looking good. And then we can replace our brake pads. Okay, so we're gonna replace our brake pads here. Those Bosch ones I showed from earlier. And those just slide in from the outside. You just might have to push the clips into their appropriate position in order for the pad to fit. Uh, it's pretty easy. Now your clips and pads and rotors should look just like mine. If yours doesn't look just like this, You've done something wrong, go ahead and redo it. And then we can swing our caliper back into position. You might have to manually move it over and then down, and that's in its place. And then I have that slide bolt from earlier and I covered it with some of that Bosch grease we had. And we can go ahead and replace that as well. We can go ahead and tighten that 17 millimeter up. There we go. Now our driver's side is complete, the passenger side is exactly the same, so you're good to go. All right, before we go anywhere, we're gonna go ahead and depress the brake pedal all the way to the floor very, very slowly, and let it back up very, very slowly. What we're doing here is uh, there's gaps between the uh, pistons and the brake pads and the rotors, so we're basically taking up that slack, because if you took off without doing this, you would have basically no front brake pressure, which is kind of the opposite of what you want. So what we're doing here is putting uh, those uh, pistons back into their normal position so they can work efficiently and you want to do this four to six times until you get a very very firm pedal and there we go so that's how to replace the rear brakes on your Toyota Highlander the driver's side is exactly the same as the passenger and vice versa so I only showed how to do one side now before you take off down the road, make sure that you do have good braking pressure and you need to brake in your brakes properly. Your brake pad and your brake rotor are two machine surfaces and if you just slam them against each other, they'll create a sort of glaze on that braking surface and prevent them from working. So what you need to do is introduce them slowly. So accelerate to about 10 miles an hour, apply the brakes lightly and then let off. Do that about five or six times and your brakes are broken in perfectly and then you can use them as needed. And the final thing I want to do before we go is go over a cost breakdown of how much money exactly you are saving. I have here a nice estimate on how much a typical shop would normally charge for something like this. Now I'm going to do the front and rear brakes uh, cost breakdown at the same time because if you're doing the rears you're most likely doing the fronts. Um, and vice versa, you most likely are going to do all four at the same time. So I want to go over that. Now, for our front pads, though it was only 35 bucks. For the rotors, it was about 60 bucks, bringing that total to $95 just to do the fronts by yourself. And if you were doing the rear, the pads are again $35. The rotors, both of them, uh, come out to about $55. So we're like $87.50. If you want to do the rear job uh, by yourself, buying these things off of Amazon, all the links are located down below in the description, bringing your total to $182.88. Now that is you doing the work, you buying the parts yourself, and just banging out your driveway, because honestly the work is pretty darn easy. I believe that anybody could do it with hand tools over, I don't know, maybe two hours. It really is not going to take you that much time. Just go slow and uh, make sure you're methodical in this sort of thing. Now. We can go over how much you're saving. I have on screen a nice scan of a typical estimate you would get if you just took it to a shop. So they're gonna charge you eh, probably right around 100 bucks for those pads, for the fronts, 67 for the rears, and then uh, the rotors, they're gonna charge you another 100 each, just about. And then you gotta pay the guy about 90 an hour to do an hour on the front, an hour on the rear, and honestly, it does not take that long. Um, so you're going to end up paying $738.28. So doing the job yourself, 
you are saving $555.40. To me, that is an astronomical amount of money and is really gonna add up the longer you own a vehicle. So knowing how to work on your own stuff, especially this easy maintenance stuff, is gonna save you thousands over the course of your lifetime. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you like me or what I do on this channel, consider clicking the join button, knowing that's completely optional. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.